What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you about angles that are formed by transversals, all right? So that includes these bad boys up here. So there's corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive interior, all right? Let's break down what the hell those mean. All right, so first of all, when we have two parallel lines right here, uh, we can show that these are parallel lines by drawing little arrows on them like that, okay? And they're intersected by this line right here called a transversal. So a transversal is just a line that intersects two or more lines at different points. So this line right here is a transversal. Okay, so when we have two parallel lines like this intersected by a transversal like that, it does some pretty neat stuff for us, all right? Because we can start relating some of these angles over here to some of these angles over here, all right? So first of all, let's start with corresponding angles, all right? So corresponding angles are just angles in similar positions, right? So for example, this two right here is in the top right. And down here, you can see the six is also in the top right, okay? So those are corresponding angles, okay? So a pair of corresponding angles would be angle two and angle six. All right, another pair, let's say top left here, top left here, one and five, okay? So one and five are also corresponding angles. Okay, and same thing, three and seven are corresponding and four and eight are corresponding. Okay, so the reason it's useful knowing these is because corresponding angles are congruent. So again, congruent just means they have the same angle. Okay, so for example, if angle two over here was, uh, let's say, uh, let's say 69 degrees, okay? Then that means angle six over here is also 69 degrees, okay? If angle one over here is 111 degrees, then that means angle five down here is also 111 degrees, okay? So those are corresponding angles, just angles in similar positions. Okay, now let's talk about alternate interior angles. So these angles are also congruent, okay? So again, that means they have the same angle measure, okay? So when it's talking about interior angles, it's basically talking about the angles that are in between your two parallel lines right here, okay? So you can almost think of this like as a sandwich, right? The parallel lines are the bread and all the goodies, all the interior angles are on the inside, okay? So then in that case, all the interior angles would be these, three, four, five, and six, okay? And when it says alternate, it's talking about on opposite sides of this transverse line, okay? And in this case, you have to go diagonally. So three and six would be alternate interior angles, right? Angles three and angle six. And the other pair here would be angle four and angle five, okay? So angle, let's just say angle four and angle five, okay? And again, these would be congruent. So if angle three right here was, if we had 80 degrees right here, then this spot right here would also be 80 degrees, okay? And over here, this four, if this was 100 degrees, then five would also be 100 degrees. So now let's talk about alternate exterior, okay? So these are also congruent, okay? So alternate exterior angles would be the angles that are basically outside of your sandwich, right? So one, two, and seven, eight, okay? Those are outside of the parallel lines, right? And again, you have to go diagonally, okay? So here, one, and eight would be a pair of alternate exterior angles, right? So angles one and eight, and then the other one would be two and seven, okay? So two and seven. All right, now lastly, we have consecutive interior angles, and these angles are supplementary, okay? Or in other words, they add up to 180 degrees, all right? So again, we're talking about interior angles, right? But now we're gonna talk about angles that are on the same side. Okay, so remember these are our interior angles, right? Three, four, five, and six. But we're talking about ones that are on the same side of this transverse line. So here, four and six would be consecutive interior angles, all right? If I added these up, they would add up to 180 degrees. So if we said four right here was 100 degrees, then six right here would be 80 degrees. Okay, and same thing on this side over here. So if five over here was, again, 100 degrees, then three, would have to be 80 degrees, okay? These two always have to add up, or get, again, when these two lines are parallel, they always have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, now, all the examples we've done here, we used parallel lines, right? But let's say, what if your lines weren't parallel? What if you had two lines like that, for example, all right? So these are obviously not parallel, and let's say we had this transversal running through these also, okay? And then we could still 
list these with the same numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so here we can still say one and five are corresponding angles, right? One is in the top left, five is in the top left. But what we can't say is that these are congruent, okay? Angle one and angle five are now very different, right? This angle is like an obtuse angle, maybe it's like 100 degrees or something, and then angle five over here, it looks like it's maybe 90 or even less than 90, maybe like 85 degrees or something, okay? So you can obviously see just by looking at it that these are no longer the same angle measure, and that's because these two lines right here are not parallel, right? So again, you can still say one and five are corresponding, but they are no longer congruent, okay? And that works for these other ones also, right? So for like alternate interior angles, again, you can say alternate interior would be like three and six, that's fine, but they are no longer congruent, okay? So if three over here is 80 degrees, we can't just assume six over here is also 80 degrees, okay? We can only do that when our two lines right here are parallel. All right, so now with all this in mind, let's jump into some examples. Okay, so here's our first example. So as you can see, we have two parallel lines right here, and we can tell because they have the two same little arrows on them, okay? And that means this line right here that's running through our parallel lines is the transversal. And it gives us one of the angles right here, 117 degrees, right? So here we're trying to solve for angle one and angle two, okay? So remember, the space between your two parallel lines, or in other words, the space between your two pieces of bread, all this is the inside of your sandwich, right? These are all the interior angles, okay? So 117 is on the outside of your sandwich, and two is also on the outside of your sandwich, right? And the other thing you can see here is that they are on opposite sides, or in other words, they're on alternate sides of this transversal line, okay? So that means these two angles right here 117 degrees and this spot right here are alternate exterior angles, okay? And remember, alternate exterior angles are congruent. So if this is 117 degrees, that means this one down here is also 117 degrees. Okay, now if you notice something, angle two right here is in the same position as angle one, All right? So if you look at this cross right here, right? This cross, we basically have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, okay? And if you look at this same cross over here, we have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, okay? So as you can see, they're both in the bottom left, okay? So that means these are corresponding angles since they're in the exact same position, okay? So since they're corresponding angles, that means they're congruent, all right? So if this is 117 degrees, that means one over here is also 117 degrees. All right, here's the next one. So here we have two parallel lines, right? Cut by this transversal line, okay? So here, remember, all this space in between your parallel lines is the inside of the sandwich, right? The interior angles. So all the angles that we're dealing with are on the interior right here, okay? So one thing that we can see is that 140 degrees and one right here are on opposite sides of this transversal line, right? and they're both on the interior. So that means they're alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles, again, are congruent, right? So if this is 140 degrees, that means this one is 140 degrees. Okay, now we can solve for angle two right here because one and two, they're both on the interior, right? They're both interior angles and they're on the same side of the transversal line. Okay, so that means they are consecutive interior angles and consecutive interior angles are supplementary right so that means these two angles right here one and two should add up to 180 degrees right so if this one's 140 degrees that means angle two right here must be 40 degrees so here we're trying to solve for x okay so again we can see we have our two parallel lines our transversal and in this case we have two interior angles that are on the same side, right? So that means these are consecutive interior angles and consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So they add up to 180 degrees, right? So if this one is 72 degrees, that means this angle right here should be equal to 108 degrees, okay? Because 72 plus 108 is equal to 180 degrees, right? 
So now we have our little equation right here that we need in order to solve for x right here, okay? So we're gonna have 7x plus 24 is equal to 108, right? So here we'll subtract 24 from both sides. 24, there we go. These cancel out. So we're left with 7x is equal to 108 minus 24, and that's equal to 84. All right, so then here we'll divide both sides by seven, cancel out. So then we're left with x is equal to 84 divided by seven, which is equal to 12, All right? So there's your answer. Okay, here's the next one. So here you can see we have two parallel lines in that direction with our transversal there, okay? So here we're trying to, again, solve for x, All right? And we don't know the measure of this angle right here, angle five. Okay, so the first thing we can do here is, if you notice, 65 and five right here, these two are corresponding angles, right? This is in the bottom left of our little cross right here, and five is in the bottom left of our little cross right here, right? So if this is 65 degrees, that means this one is also 60, let's write it here, 65 degrees. Now, how can we figure out what this angle should be? So one thing we can do here is say that 65 degrees and this angle right here, they are supplementary angles, right? So these two angles right here should add up to 180 degrees. So if this one's 65 degrees, then this one should be 115 degrees, okay? So we could just set this little equation right here equal to 115 degrees. Another way that we could also solve these is by solving for this angle right here. Let's just call this angle, I don't know, three, okay? So we can solve for angle three right here, right? Because as you can see, three and five, they are consecutive interior angles, right? They're in between our parallel lines and they're on the same side of this transversal. So three and five right here are consecutive interior angles and consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Okay, so if we have 65 degrees right here, that means this one right here would have to be 115 degrees. Okay, and now if you notice something, this angle right here and this angle right here are corresponding angles, right? This spot right here is in the bottom right, and this spot right here is also in the bottom right of our crosses, okay? So since they're corresponding angles, that means if this is 115 degrees, this one also has to be 115 degrees, okay? So by that reasoning, again, we can set it equal to 115 degrees, okay? So those are two different ways of looking at this problem. But in either case, now we can solve for x, right? So we can say 11x minus 17 is equal to 115 and then we'll add 17 to both sides. Okay, these cancel out, so then we get 11x is equal to 132. Okay, and then we'll divide both sides by 11. These cancel out, so then we get x is equal to 132 divided by 11, which is equal to 12. Okay, so here we get x is equal to 12. Okay, now in this problem right here, we have three angles that we need to figure out, one, two, and three, okay? And as you can see, we have two sets of parallel lines, right? We have these two horizontally, and then these two other ones at a different angle. All right, so in this problem, we basically have two transversal lines, right? But nothing changes, right? Everything still works the exact same way, okay? So first of all, let's solve for the measure of angle one right here, okay? So as you can see, we're given 80 degrees, we have one right here, and these are interior angles, right? Interior angles are always in between two parallel lines, right? So essentially all of these are interior angles no matter which way you look at it, right? They can be between these two parallel lines or they can be between these two parallel lines, right? Whichever way you look at it, they're still interior angles, okay? So as you can see, one and 80 degrees right here are on the same side of essentially this transversal line right here, right? So that means these are consecutive interior angles. So again, that means they should add up to 180 degrees, right? So if this is 80 degrees, that means uh, angle one right here should be 100 degrees, okay? Another thing that stands out now is that one and two, these are also consecutive interior angles, right? We already said that they're interior angles, but they're also on the same side of this transversal line right here, okay? So since this is 100 degrees, that means this one would be 80 degrees. And then lastly, angle three right here, you could probably already guess what it is. But again, this is an interior angle with angle two over here, and it's an interior angle with angle 80 over here, right? But in either case, they should still add up to 180 degrees. So that means angle three right here is 100 degrees. 
So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.